Uh, so happy to be here. We've been talking about uh, Skeleti coming to this event for years, literally, and, and finally, last minute, we made it happen. Uh, so thank you for being here and listening. Uh, thank you for the wide audience to be around. Um, I'm very happy to be engaging with a larger group. So I know that uh, the name of the game here is to be very technical, so why would you have a CEO speak? And um, I'm sorry, I'm go going to bore you with context for 15 minutes. And, uh, and the reason I'm doing this is that I don't think that uh, anyone should look at technology without understanding the context in which the technology was designed and created and what it's trying to do in the world. Uh, technology is a means to an end. It's not just the, the goal per se, even if I love to talk about the ins and outs of technology. <laughs> um, so, and after that, we'll talk about uh, one of our new products, the S-Reconnector for the enterprise, and how this is really enterprise friendly, and that will be done by uh, uh, Paul Specialy, our VP product. And then we'll talk about our open source initiative, the uh, S-Re server, and I hope that every one of you, and yes, that's also every one of you um, over there in the big cloud, uh, will be uh, downloading and playing with it and giving us feedback, and we love feedback, positive, negative. Any feedback is good, because it's an opportunity to improve or rejoice. So. Who can tell me which city these pictures come from? At a glance, really quick. So we all, we all know Uber. And we all know that taxis are really pissed at Uber, and for a good reason. I mean, there's a few taxi companies around the world that are actually hmm. going bankrupt because of Uber, in the same way that uh, some hotels are going bankrupt uh, because of Airbnb. That's a disruption. A disruption creates some new leaders, and uh, the old leaders are disappearing, uh, sometimes slowly, sometimes faster. Um, the point here is that we've, it's very far from being the first uh, disruption in the taxi industry. I really especially like this picture taken in 1902 in New York. Do you know what's the taxi circle in red here? Come on, boys. What's your new technology? 1902? 1902. That's 1902. Electric. I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> who said that? <laughs> I mean, he's heard the pitch before. Yeah, that's an electric car. So for those who think that the electric car is a new thing, uh, okay, well, it, it was around. So actually, in New York, uh, electric taxis started deploying before um, um, gas engine taxis uh, were deployed. Uh, and the, uh, at the very turn of the century, they were more electric and steam engine taxis uh, than they were uh, uh, the, the kind of uh, gas engine that we know today. In fact, um, if I can interrupt, and, uh, Henry Ford's wife drove an electric car because she hated gas-powered cars. Mm. How cool is that? At, at, at the time, if you go back and you read many articles about how great uh, the, the, what all, <coughs> all the advantages are of electric car. Now, you need to replace yourself. It's all the advantage over horsepower carriage, obviously, because that's the real competition, not the gas. And um, anyway, that's that's long story. But the point here is that there are revolutions going on. Uh, this is the latest uh, Uber uh, car that is going to be self-driven. Uh, they're starting um, a, a trial now that you can see them on the street, not in New York for, so far. And they're not completely self-driven. You still have a human just checking that the car does the right thing. But hey, it's just a matter of years that uh, the, this whole transportation industry is going to go through uh, self-driving. And this is just uh, I'll be, this I'll is be just fine when we get to every car as a self-driving car. It's the combination <laughs> of human-driven cars and self <laughs> of, of stupid people and self-driving cars that worries so, me. So so I mean Howard, we we've had our own our debates many times. I don't think that people are stupid, but I will agree with you that humans are incredibly bad at sustaining attention. <laughs> so, so, so they can be very bright, and at some point they receive a phone call, and it's a very urgent phone call, and they don't pay attention to the road, and boom! Oh, sorry, there was a pedestrian, and he's not here anymore. You, you've always so, been more polite than I. So anyway, the, the point here is the digital revolution that people are talking about. It, it's a big thing, and it's a big thing, and I, I feel that, especially in the very large enterprise, you know, you've got the CEOs talking about it, but they just don't realize how much it's going to change their world. And especially when we talk about you know, um, business, and that's what we're here to talk about a little bit, um, the, the notion of jobs is going to change. And basically, the value of human uh, is going to either go to zero or to infinite. So de depending on the kind of job, it will, humans will be valued zero if they can be uh, replaced by a machine. Uh, because it, the value of the human doing the job will be exactly 
the maintenance value of the machine that can do the same job. And that's not very high. Um, or it will be close to infinite because uh, uh, someone who has indeed creativity, for example, um, will have infinite purchase power compared to the ones who are just doing a routine job that can be replaced by a machine. This is massive. I mean, if we take the, the, the transportation industry in the US, any idea of how many jobs that is? Well, there's something like 50,000 truck driver jobs that are threatened as soon as self-driving big rigs come in. There's 4.5 million transportation jobs in the US. 4.5 million. <laughs> So when this thing comes up, and it's not going to be overnight, okay? But when this thing comes up, you, you're talking about major change in the structure of which jobs are available. And I'm, I'm picking on cars because it's an easy example. I think everyone is agreeing that self-driving car is around the corner. And, and if it's 20 years from now, it's still around the corner. But it's the same in many fields. Uh, you know, schooling, uh, the teacher used to be the one who knows now the teacher may be the one who organized the, the, the knowledge, but the one who knows is Google anyway. Um, healthcare, um, more and more diagnosis is going to be done by systems because they will be able to pull more data, more big data. Yeah, another thing that the human brain is not good at is memory. Uh, we're, we're, we're good at making association, but memorizing a million cases, no way, we don't do that. Um, transportation, we talked about it, finance with the blockchain. Retail, industrial production, uh, 3D printing is one of the big changes. The other one is uh, all instrumentation of systems. Uh, democracy and government, we've seen that with the Arab Spring, and this is just the beginning of what social media will do to government. And the storage admin, as we know it. The storage admin is going to disappear. I mean, that, that job is getting automatized. And honestly, if I had to put the high mission of scality, it's, it's to automatize the job of storage. Okay, so, this, so I, like the teacher, let me finish. Trying to put, make us all unemployed. Huh? <laughs> no, well, let me finish. Not Exa the exactly like the teacher is not going to disappear, it's just that his mission is changing. The storage admin is actually not going to disappear. His mission is going to be changing. But the idea of essentially managing data from a volume to another to load balance uh, performance and capacity, that's going away. That's going to be a software. Yeah. So it's really, when I say here it's going to disappear, really it's, it's going to change fundamentally. Yeah. And in the same, I do think that there's going to be a taxi industry in the future, but it's going to be about greeting the customer. It's not going to be about driving the car. It's going to be about being a host in the transit in some ways. And that industry hasn't been invented yet, but it will happen. One sure of the, it's the limousine one, industry. Well, one of the industry that, that's going to continue is care. Or, uh, caring for individuals is going to be a big thing. So things won't change. Uh, Philly cheesecake, I'm a big Philly, Philly fan. Uh, plumbers, you still need people to adjust. Uh, hairdressers, I'm, I'm not ready to give my, my, my hair to uh, a robot. The funny thing is, I would probably be ready to give a surgery to a robot now. And I think that a robot would do a better job. But my hair, no, that's too personal. <laughs> so you, you need to think. Anyway, the, the point here is we are in a changing world. And um, you know we, we need to look 10 years ahead. Th these things are real. And we, we just see one increment at a time. But every job is going to change. And the, 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 the power of that comes essentially from the digitalization of all <coughs> human interaction and machine to machine interaction and machine to human interaction. Everything is going through digital. Look at the media industry. Remember when the cinema was actually a real film? I've, I've touched some. I've actually been a film projector at some point. Um, and uh, well, that's, that's all digital now. And mm. as you go digital, you want to store things digitally. So you need large capacity storage platforms. And as we have more and more big data and AI to be able to drive insight from the data, and as the human time becomes more and more valuable, you're going to keep the data because you don't want to spend the time to erase it. And the data might have some value. And we don't really know, but the <coughs> cost of losing that value is too big. Um, yeah, IoT is another big thing. I, I used to think that IoT is such small amount of data that it's not for scality. Um, an airplane, just one flight is one terabyte for, of data for a flight. Just one terabyte. How many flights a day around the planet? 100,000. That's 100 petabyte a day. Do we need to keep the whole 100 petabyte? I'm not sure we need to keep the whole thing. Should we keep a fraction? And can we better predict failures before they happen? And can we reduce maintenance time on airplane? Absolutely, yes. How much is it worth? 
It's literally billions of dollars. I mean, I actually... Uh, You'd it, like it, to have it, all these petabytes what? in line forever. It, it, You'd it, like to have all these petabytes online forever. <laughs> I, I'm not sure that people will keep all the petabytes online forever, but you do need a critical mass of data to be able to derive these. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just, the, the new kind of AI uh, that, that works nowadays is definitely big data driven. So, you know, in, in a sense, that's what we thought. Okay? We automatize storage for the digital business. Um, we have a distributed system. It's incredibly, I, I like to say, and sorry for, for the engineers in the room, I like to say it's infinitely reliable. I cannot say 100% reliable because uh, nothing is 100%. But if I say infinitely, I mean you can design it to any point of reliability that you want to uh, do. It's uh, infinitely high performance in terms of number of transactions per second, and uh, we have customers doing thousands of transactions per second, or in terms of throughput, and we have uh, customers doing literally gigabytes, even tens of gigabytes per second. I mean, th these are huge amounts of data being transited. Uh, because it's a completely parallel system, the scale out in, in the design, um, we're object storage at the core, but we can present file or object, and we're also OpenStack compatible. So we really, we, we really have an architecture that's uh, designed for the future, but we really make a point to reach to the real application today and the real data center today, and not tell the IT industry, well, change everything, and then you can use Skeleton Storage which I think would be a huge point. So we've, we've really done the extra step. Uh, we are a software company. We run on any x86 servers. Now, not every 86 server is born equal. Put the best software in the world on a shitty server, you get a shitty service. So, I mean, you, you put any server you want, but be realistic, uh, some servers are better than others. Uh, we work uh, very heavily with HP and Dell uh, and also Cisco. HP and Dell actually distribute our software and HP, Dell and Cisco represent more than 50% of the server industry. Uh, so obviously we, we work with uh, some of the major brands here. What our customers tell us? First of all, the cloudification of enterprise IT is accelerating. Um, more and more workloads are moving to cloud itself. Some workloads are actually coming back to, from cloud back to the control of the IT department. Um, we used to make the um, opposition of public cloud versus on-prem. There's many more flavors now. One of the flavors that we see growing a lot is a hosted private cloud, where a company will actually buy space in a colo facility and get the servers be managed by a company like OVH. We're actually announcing today a partnership with OVH, which is the third largest hoster in the world, a pretty large company. And um, so they, they, they still have the system be hosted, but they retain control of the design. So cloudification of enterprise IT is accelerating. The other thing is enterprise want multiple cloud. Um, it's not about public cloud or private cloud or hybrid cloud. It's really multiple cloud, and there's going to be many flavors of that. And, and the dream of the enterprise is I design an application I don't have to decide at the time of design where I'm going to run it. And I want to be able to change my mind. And that's what we believe in at Skeleton. Object is the best for large capacity storage. We're absolutely convinced of that. We can take the debate later. You'll have it with Paul, actually. Um, and S3 is the standard API. Um, if there was some time, there was, there was discussion whether it would be CDMI or Swift or S3. S3 has won. It's the standard API. This is where people go. And honestly, kudos to Amazon. Uh, we, we implemented the S3 for the first time in 2010, uh, so quite a long time ago. At the time, um, the S3 API was really rudimentary. Um, and, uh, and at the time, we, we considered that it was not rich enough to be able to power large scalable systems um, that would be implemented within the data center. It was good for what S3 was at the time as a public cloud address through the internet, but in the data center, we didn't see it. Um, it's night and day. Today, the API is rich, and we have everything that we need uh, to be able to work and bring an enterprise service. We believe that files are an integral part of enterprise IT, and it's here to stay. Okay, 20 years from now, you, there will still be file systems. So don't don't hope that everything will move to object. <coughs> but we see we see object as being the the core structure of the large scale storage with a native file system presentation. And in all of you, it's very essential that the file and the object store have a shared namespace. 
so that you can read a file through the object interface. We actually have many customers doing this, especially uh, in the media and entertainment industry, where most of their MAM, media asset managers, are uh, accustomed to write SMB, so the, the, the Windows system, and, and they want to write through a file system. Uh, but all of their reading happens through CDN to tablets, and that's HTTP driven, and it's much better for them to address our system as an object source. So they store that file, they read as object. It's a very common use case. Um, and the other thing that we're seeing is that DevOps are more and more influencing infrastructure choices. Uh, this is why we have launched an open source product in June, and we're actually shifting uh, our communication more to, to the DevOps developers of the world, uh, and, and we're also listening more to them and to what they have to say about how they would like uh, a system to, um, to behave. I'm going to spend just literally two minutes about customers so you know who we sell to. I don't think that this is what you want me to focus on too much, uh, and, uh, and we can talk more if you have questions about that. Um, who, who do we sell to? We've got 116 customers so far. I have to understand that any for any of them, it's a big uh, decision to deploy Scality. Uh, we deploy at petabyte scale. Many of them are over 20 petabyte. Uh, most of them, it's over a million dollar worth of investment. Um, and so it, it's a big decision. Um, our revenue is 50% North America, 35% EMEA, 15% APAC. We're a true global company. Uh, but most interestingly, 50% of our revenue comes from public cloud. Uh, whether it's consumer services like Dailymotion, uh, or the big cable operators, or the telcos around the world, um, EAS like uh, Rackspace, and we just announced today OVH, uh, or enterprise SaaS like uh, NetDocs, Daisy, uh, Daisy is um, disaster recovery as a service where they, they stage a complete disaster recovery that's ready to go, uh, and we have uh, several IoT clouds as well. So 50% of our revenue comes from public cloud. Um, so. You know, there's this idea that public cloud has got a, um, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google, and that's it. Well, no, they, they, there's more than that out there, and we power many of them. Um, and then 50% of our revenue is enterprise, uh, whether you're talking uh, private hybrid cloud in Global 2000, uh, a lot of video distribution and media entertainment customers, that's about 15% of our revenue. Uh, a lot of just enterprise backup and archive. You know, when, when they reach the petabyte scale, we're a really great solution, especially with the throughput that we can offer, because backup is a throughput game. Um, and then government and surveillance also is a, bit, is a significant customer base. So, uh, you know, really public cloud and enterprise, and we're really committed to serving both populations, but for those who think at large scale. Uh, and I'd say, you know, uh, fast forward 20 years, we probably have 20,000 potential customers in the world all the others will essentially be putting their IT in a public cloud. They're not big enough to continue operating their IT, or at least I would not recommend it to them. Uh, some logos, I'm just going to go through them. Seven of the 20 largest communication companies in the world. We've got over 500 million users worldwide relying on Scality. I mean, it's a frightening number, actually. Um, but it's big. We're, and, and frightening, but we're proud of it. Um, and, uh, and many, uh, many, many billions of objects um, just a, a couple of words about the company itself. We, we leverage as alliances, HP, Dell, Cisco. We talked about AWS as well. Uh, we've got a channel and ISV program. Uh, we, we train a lot. Uh, we've got an online training course, and we've got over 500 people who are certified on Scality technology. Um, and, uh, and we continue investing in our technology heavily. We've got 70 engineers continuing to develop the product. We're, we're, we're definitely, we see the future. We're here for the long term. Um, 